Hello guys, I'm Barry Ashton, this is my Pony Halloween video called Halloween 2022 Return to Bittersweet Apple Acres and will be fanfic reading part 4 Grimdark is 25 minutes and 15 seconds long Oh yes! Okay, Return to Bittersweet Apple Acres part 4 Okay, what happened last time? I think someone got um, imploded on himself, basically he got killed That's... <sighs> keep forgetting the name and I got a feeling things are only going to get more gruesome. Very gruesome indeed. And the struggles are only going to get... Oh, yeah, the struggles are going to get harder. There are going to be probably more booby traps in Applejack's um, orchard barn thing. It's like... Is it like a prison? Like, Is it like a, like a maze within a barn sort of thing? Let's find out. Let's get the rest of in 3, in 2, in 1, go! Okay, it's not the tenor for young review. Thank you. Thank you. My God. <laughs> Bow present. That's my own heart. I had known that it was do or die in that place. Every decision I had made up to that point had ended the lives of two wonderful Oh, no intro! I cared for greatly. That's different. Dimming them to eternal suffering. Yes, a very eternal suffering. After Sarah, I didn't know what to expect. You didn't? And only had hoped that Henry was still alive and hadn't been caught. He was smart and clever. And in my mind, even if that place had been oh, controlled... Yeah. Henry, is that the one who died? Is that the one who died last time? I just knew that he had the brain to outwit those demons. That must have taken some courage. Plenty of sticky situations before. And had done the impossible to overcome them. Should yeah. Get out last the Apple family sick game of hide and seek, right? Uh, I don't know about that. Know the answer to that question as much as me. Yeah. So I won't bother wasting time in my pointless hopes of what could have been. One He's thing dead. is true, though, about What's my that? statements. What? Henry had outlasted the chase the longest, and along with me, had nearly made it out alive. Nearly. Or so we thought. We quickly had learned just how disturbing great the Apple family had been at feeding you false hope. Oh. The very thing that false sense of security as well. For an entire decade. The very thing that had nearly led me to my end and eternal damnation at the hooves of the mayor known infamously as Bitter Sweet, sweet Apple. Applejack. Applejack. Yeah. Hours had passed since Flora had witnessed her friend's head being crushed like a bug. Oh, she had left yeah. the torture room had taken refuge in a seemingly good enough hiding spot. From the room, Whoa. it had led to good. a staircase that in led to the rooms, rooms whose sights would be forever burned into Floor's memories. The first contained what had looked like an aged dentist chair, and a pair De of restraints that hung from opposite walls by chains connected to a large pair of rusted steel rings. It's called a torture device then. The side had been a table with things like scalpels, scissors, a hammer, and even a cleaver laid out in an unorderly fashion. Oh. And the chair and floor had been soaked in blood stains. The second had crimson bloody blood stains from the ceiling along with its own tray of torture tools. The assortment being yeah. much different and intended for much more violent means. It's By dare to kill you! At the inside of the third, Flora had only turned and ran, 
the room having contained a lone saw table with a recently gutted victim upon it in searing agony. Is this like so? Is this like so serious? I've never seen so. The victim was already forsaken to a grim fate, so she just ran as fast as she could, not even caring which way she wandered. She no. just wanted the horror to end, and it seems the only way to avoid any true terror was to just keep moving. Uh... She had no idea how long she'd been there, hoping for the night to end and be it's able only to go home. It seems like only three days. She didn't care if she got in trouble for trespassing on prohibited property, if her mom drunkenly grounded her for months, if she had to serve probation or community service. Anything was better Has than time that. really passed when you actually After were there? her current hiding spot, all she had done was think. Think about How what? How would she tell Trevor and Sarah's parents about the absence of their child? You can't she tell. She couldn't speak the truth. Ever. Ever. No pony would ever believe her. And she would Is that Dr. Goldstein would? She could only go on with those horrid memories and do everything she could to keep every pony crazy enough to learn more about the Apple Family Massacre away from that cursed foundation. Yeah. She now understood what Crimson Flash had meant upon the decree of attempting to bury that grim decade of murder and tragedy completely. MURDER IN THE BARN! Even if you tried. Because the memories still live on. And the spirit for livid, the it's livid in your memory, isn't it? To remain on the foundation, due to the fact that those who knew of it would carry on their legacy. By telling the story of the Apple Family Massacre, some ponies dumb enough, like her, would go looking for answers, drawing more victims back to the slaughter. Yeah. In truth, the Apple Family never died, and their terror continued still to that day. The thought of it made Flora shiver in the grotesque realization of It looks like Applejack is already dead, but she seriously? She never bat an eye at the Apple Family Massacre. Ever Maybe again. Maybe if she hadn't, her friends would still be alive, and they'd be doing something else not as stupid to celebrate Nightmare Night. Yeah. Getting candy drunk. Vandalizing houses of ponies she doesn't like with toilet paper. Doing <laughs> something stupid like a mixed drink out of pure pressure. But no. Mixed drink. Instead, she'd never get to potentially do that or anything with Sarah or Trevor. She had forsaken them to something more unimaginable, and in her eyes, unforgivable. Yeah, to the death, to the, to the depths. The thought, feeling she should just call out the demonic headless witch pursuing her to join them in the same fate. But something forbid her. Doing Fulfilled. So would hurt more than just her. Her it will hurt her was others. Unstable enough from her past, having resorted to alcohol whenever she spent the night all alone. Okay, drink her alcoholism. Yeah, alcoholism. Her only to be even more devastated at the confirmation that her daughter is not wherever you go when the sand finally runs out. Yeah. Flora couldn't allow that. No. Her mother had burned and raised her practically alone, and had given her the best life possible. She couldn't just repay the no. mother who had shaped and made her into the mare she was with just a basic suicide. She had to do what her mom had taught her. To be What's strong that? and keep trying your hardest, no matter what. Yeah. But her strength was beginning to dwindle like a flickering flame in wind. And she honestly... You're losing, um... Go from where she was. Point sense of... She that she couldn't your, your bones might be a bit, um... Chasing her to just give up. She knew it wouldn't be You're feeling exhausted. that easy, and that if she made it to the final minutes of the night, the danger would increase tenfold. These weren't just regular ponies that give up easily. No. These were ruthless and sinister killers that would chase her to the ends of the world just to please their sick and twisted joys of capturing ponies and killing them. Yeah. It was like a drug with an intense high to them. And they lived for that sensation. Uh, ACD or something. They wouldn't give up until Flora's hooves were bound and her muzzle was dressed with a stained cloth. They would hunt her for eternity. Have you got a tracking device on you? How did you get here, Flora? How did Sarah and Trevor end up dead when they still had so much to live for? So young and You made the decision to go here! 
instant. She wanted to cry again, but she had no tears left to shed. Therefore, she just thought, and thought, and thought, and more, and more, more, more. I can't keep dreading over what's already been done. They're dead, and there's nothing I can do about you it. You only can do is move forward. I need to move forward and try to find him. Oh, fuck you! Knowing him, he would have on the path. He would have broken from it and tried another way. Seriously! Flora knew Henry well, and that when it came to hiding, he was Seriously! She had no idea where he was, and maybe that was a good thing. She remembered the way Seriously, he man! Sarah, My God! And knew immediately that if Henry had an opportunity as such, he wouldn't What's hesitate that? to abuse it. It would be less than ten feet from her, and she'd never even know. No. That's how it's like, it's... and crafty Henry Quickwit is in a sticky situation. That sounds like a maze. She no, also no. knew that Henry couldn't be her top objective, and that her top mission was survival. Her chances of finding Henry were less to none. To the end. And if she only focused on finding to the end of Henry days. Of hundreds of twists and turns, she'd most likely be caught. You will be caught. It's not a matter of saving lives anymore, Flora. What matters is getting the hell out of here with your heart still beating and body in one piece. It takes. Henry, it will take some serious manpower to do it, or woman power. She prepared herself, taking one last close listen for any dangers nearby. No hooves, no voices, no laughter or misleading screams. All that had occupied the space about the sense? Freaks of the many pipes and what about your senses, though? The silence. She sighed upon the relief of the area being clear of any danger, moving to slide the wall she was hidden behind open to the familiar sight of a hall lined with pipes and a single narrow walkway. Do? The wall sliding open produced a very audible creak, making her heart race in fear of Applejack catching wind of her location. Luckily, she was fortunate, but didn't stick around. Moving forward, she must, must be one huge fucking bomb, man. In her truck. It wasn't clear on which way to go, both paths seeming the exact same. Laura didn't want to just leave it up to an eeny meeny miny mo decision. No, no, no. Knowing her decisions actually mattered. It, it would take some or investigation. Else, one path could lead to an alternate exit or an imminent death trap. So yeah. She smartly put her ear outward to listen for anything suspicious down each path. Unfortunately, she couldn't no. hear anything in particular down either, and cursed silently at the fact that she had to choose one and hope it was the right one. Can you actually save in the, in the bond? Considering she was right hook, she decided on that and cautiously worked her way deeper into the maw of the creepily ambient tunnel. It extended for about another 40 feet. Up until it came to a right I'm, turn, I'm thinking like, like, a, like a hospital, hospital, you know, like hospital, hospital ward. Walking down corridor, Frankly, corridor. It just led to another door, to which she curiously stepped forward to and attempted to open, thinking maybe it, was it could be some other exit. She was surprised when the door didn't seize and opened with ease. Really? Leading into a room with empty wooden shelves off to each side and a long wooden cellar entrance on the floor. Sarah. The entrance was a two-door entrance composed of rotted wood and chipped white paint slowly coming off the base. No change or It's been there for a very long time then. Causing Flora to wonder what may lie behind that door, and if she should go down in hopes of there being some alternate route that led elsewhere outside of the labyrinth. You might and be fine Thomas down there. What happened to victims stupid enough to wander into a basement or cellar in the many horror movies she'd seen, having second thoughts immediately. That's why the hoarding stuff are. Most likely meant an immediately dead end where she'd be killed or captured. So she started to turn around to go back the opposite way, Double. until a sound suddenly caught her ears. Cry. The sound of hooves growing in volume close by. She oh, wanted yeah. to believe it could be Henry. But she wasn't an idiot, knowing she was at a dead end, and most likely, dead if she waited to see. She didn't even give a second thought and moved to opening the cellar doors, 
their hinges sinking upon being lifted, but not loud enough to raise any attention. Flora didn't even wait to hear. You going deeper into, into the bomb now? And just rushed into what looked like a dark abyss with only two visible steps from the top. Yeah. She didn't care, and to be absolutely sure that she didn't give her pursuer any hint that she was there, she closed the cellar doors behind her. Immediately, darkness drowned her vision. And with Very, only it's... about 30 seconds of separation between her and the other pony, began to step carefully. Her heart pounded with terror. You don't know what's down there, do you? Pitch black with care and haste, and eventually reaching the bottom floor without actually falling or hitting anything. The floor was cold, Flora guessing it being concrete, as she put her hooves out to feel for whatever may dwell in this pit of hell. She couldn't feel anything, but still didn't think for a second. How'd you know it's concrete, though? Does it sound like concrete then, or stone? Continuing to navigate with care. It was as if she were wandering in an endless void, no end in sight or anything in general around her as she continued to move across the room quickly enough to make enough distance between her and the I just imagine it, it's pitch, it must be very pitch black Upon down there. cold touch to her front right hoof, she jumped, feeling around further and feeling what felt like the outline of a shelf. Carefully, she searched for the open end of the shelf, being careful not to knock it over at the slightest dancing of her nerves. Yeah, don't knock anything over! And the cellar door sang out, causing Flora's heart to drop, praying she hadn't ended up in a dead-end situation. The light from the oh, upper getting floor spotted. down, allowing her to actually see the outline of the room faintly but clear enough. Upon her eyes meeting the contents of the room, she nearly lost her stomach. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Jars. Whoa. Hundreds of neatly labeled and organized jars stocked on wooden shelves. Oh, like organs! And sealed with a crimson liquid. Blood! Flora knew exactly where she was now. This was where the victim's blood was stored away. Why? Every single one of them. Why though? A Why? It suddenly became evident to Flora's nostrils and it almost overwhelmed her to the point of passing out. But her or being sick. instincts stopped it. Copper. As if she were in a vault of freshly made copper bits, with an added touch of the scent of rot. Ugh. Flora had wandered into a graveyard and slaughterhouse. Yeah. The pony was luring in closer, so Flora moved silently to the back side of the shelf on the far right side of the room, crouching down and covering her muzzle with her hooves. Don't make a sound! she had taken refuge, her pursuer had entered the room fully, Carrying something on their shoulder. She recognized the pony just from their stock body as the same who had tortured and killed Sarah. But whatever was over their shoulder was out of her view. Quietly, she maneuvered to where she could see better, only to regret it instantly. Oh, who was it? It was Sarah, unharmed and tied up. Oh, tied up. Oh, Laura was about to make an attempt to rescue her. Up until Don't! She remembered Jane Doe. You know what happened last time? She had been killed already, but looked fine and alive, aside from oh! hidden injuries behind the rag. Sudden Sarah death! had clearly died. She had seen it with her own eyes. And now, this must be what happens after some pony becomes an eternal victim. As much as it pained her to watch this, she knew there was absolutely nothing she could do to save Sarah anymore. So no, she she's, just had she, to bite the she's done for. Close her eyes. However, upon the sudden sound of another pair of hooves, Laura jumped in surprise. What? From the stairs came Applejack, still headless but no less terrifying. Headless, look at that. And just approached. Nearly headless Applejack. You know I like you better with your head. Reminds me of our lively days together. You know. Big Mac stated. Hello, Big Mac. Fine. I figured you'd gotten used to headless me by now, but just for you, Big Mac. Applejack Scott. Then. I so imagine a Frankenstein, um. Hundreds of tens of. A Frankenstein Big Mac. Jack's neck and began to contort and shift into something full. Oh, oh my gosh, the sound! Emerald, emerald eyes formed and every feature of a natural pony's head took full form. 
Oh dear. In place of what was once empty space, was now a head with fully functional organs, freshly grown tan fur, and a Stetson placed atop her head. What? There, happy. Yes. Yup. Yep. Applejack just rolled her eyes, walking towards Sarah with a malevolent look on her face. Yeah. Oh! Wake up! Applejack huh? commanded violently, Sarah's eyes opening slowly. She's alive? Sarah immediately started to object in absolute terror and desperation for some pony to hear and save her, her voice muffled by the rag covering her muzzle. The pleas and cries from Sarah sprung a demonic grin on Applejack's face, to which she just laughed. <laughs> Help me! Save me! Don't let me die, Celestia above! It's always the same. But guess what, Trigger? It always ends the same, too. We killed that pompous bitch and her little sister over a decade ago. Ain't no pony coming to save ya or able to save ya. Y'all chose this path, so live with it. Yeah. Y'all chose to come back and visit the apples, so be a good guest and shut up. Shut up! Another hard and violent strike across Sarah's face landed, and to Flora's absolute horror, it had been devastating enough to dislocate Sarah's jaw, oh. now dangling like a dead leaf to a tree branch. She can't speak, can she? She wanted so badly to stop this, but she just kept telling herself that there was nothing she could do and held herself to her position. Sarah was crying now, much to Applejack's displeasure, but it was enough to please her to where she stopped the violence. Please do. Please stop. Much better. It's very impolite to act so disrespectful while a guest here. So it's best you learn to- This is special, Applejack! You're the one that fucking killing people! Oh, ponies! Time, so you best get comfy to your new accommodations. You'll serve much a good purpose here, and will for such a long time. But first, yeah. we have a what? special little welcoming ritual for y'all to make it official. You hot? She gave Big Mac a signal to proceed, to which he grabbed a jar of the same size from just outside Flora's sight and placed it just below the jugular of Sarah's neck. Flora knew what was coming next and couldn't watch, closing her eyes and covering her- Are these pictures here? Many- so the many ponies? Oh, no. Applejack opened a nearby drawer anyway. and pulled out a sheathed knife pulling it from its leather home and approaching Sarah yet again. Oh, Sarah's gonna get... actions intensified instantly. She's gonna lose blood! everything she could to break her binds and her screams rising in volume and severity. Applejack could have cared less, forcing Sarah's head back and playfully hovering the knife's blade just above her flesh. Oh. You see, if you want to be one of our- Is she gonna be a mark? Commit to it. <laughs> And that means giving up whatever holds you to any other family, including your own. Don't oh, yeah? worry, though. I promise that we'll make your sacrifice worth it by giving y'all the best treatment we can offer here at Sweet Apple Acres. So you're hot. sorry the conditions must be so tragic, but that's just how things are here. So, without any further objections, I. They're gonna kill you! Welcome you to the Apple family. Blood had started to splatter everywhere from the wound, into the jar and filling quickly. Sarah choked and coughed as she fought endlessly against Applejack's strength, her fate sealed in stone. Yeah. It was a painful amount of time before Sarah's jar had finally been filled to the brim, her body having gone limp in her confines and upon Applejack letting her head back forth, collapsed to the floor dead as grass in winter. You're dead. That never gets old. Nor does the warm feeling of a newly filled jar of their life supply. Applejack said coldly, rotating the jar atop her right hoof. We could do it though. Big Mac nodded in agreement. I'll dispose her body in the orchard. While you work on finding those last two, time is running out. So we time? can't just keep toying with them. No. We need to finish them. 
Yeah, we do. Yeah. No more playing around with them. It's time for some fun. I especially have plans for that one that got away. Next time I get a hold of that golden one, she's right there, though. Knock her out. You're in a dangerous position. You're in a dangerous area, mate. I want you to get back to making the new show. After all, we don't want anything happening to our newest family member. Do we? With that said, both of them departed the cellar with Sarah's lifeless husk. Once the coast was clear, Laura released her hold on her muzzle and just sat in thought. She knew for sure now that Henry was still alive, and that this grim game of hide and seek was nearing its end. However, she also knew that the game was about to get a lot more difficult and potentially impossible. Yeah. How do we get- Stay alive a little longer, Henry. Getting up, she prepared herself for whatever was to come. You gotta try to get fun if you just- Survive. Don't stop. Keep on going. Not an option. That's from Apollo 13, actually. Put failure is not an option. Things are gonna get even more harder. To be continued! Okay, that was Halloween 2022, Return to Peter's Sweet Upper Acres, and we're with Fanfic Reading, Part 4 of Grimdark. Okay, she, things are going to get even tougher by the, by the sounds of it. And it's not going to be pretty. Okay, when I start the story, I think... This barn has to be one of the biggest maids within the barn. Right. I, th I can't imagine a barn having so many pipe work. Seriously, it's like having the like a rainbow factory, but in Applejack version, barn version. And this, this, as I say, area seems to be very large. The barn must be very large, and I keep thinking the size of football pitch or something. It's all knots and crannies, lots of rooms, like a maze, like in a hospital. Like a haunted hospital and pitch black or semi darkness, so you, you're feeling yourself around. Then you happen to find one door that opens to lead to the cellar, and you have to go down it. But you had no, I don't think you had a choice because it's one way you're going to get killed and find out. Go down even more, you have the chance to get killed again, but. You're trying to not to get spotted. That must be fucking very difficult. Try not to scream out. That is takes some self control not to do that. Especially when your boy hurting. You might be bleeding as well. I'm surprised that Applejack or even Big Man couldn't even smell you if you're giving up some sort of an odor. Because I don't. You would. I wouldn't expect you had had like a bath. Surely you'd be stinking. And Applejack can't sense that. Or be back. Or is the blood so powerful that that's the only thing you can smell? You can't smell other things like human f um, pony flesh, sort of thing. The pony doesn't stand a chance. When you, once you're in Applejack's grasp or you're in the torture de device, there's no chance to escape. You could have die. Basically, you could have die. Not even a chance for a final. Um, words, no. Very gruesome. And I think there's one more chapter to go. But well, apparently this is only part one! <laughs> My god! What is Val thinking of next? Mr. Stephen King guy! Anyway. On that note. I hope you like this reaction. And I'll very reaction video as I do. And I'll see you next time. Oh, yes. And I'll fly, and I'll fly until the end.